by God's grace, St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Whitewater, Wisconsin, celebrated its 150th anniversary in the year 2016. Actually, St. John's history began before that. It began when Whitewater was only a teenager of 16 years old. In 1853, Pastor Frederick Locker of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, started to visit Whitewater. He came at various intervals to minister to one of his members by the name of Fred Mitzloff, who was employed at a local lumberyard. He came to minister to him and also to preach to any others that would come. When Pastor Lochner could no longer get away to do this, he induced Pastor Strassen of Watertown, who continued these ministerial visits from 1859 to 1861. Pastor Hans Peter Duborg became the pastor of the Norwegian congregations in and around Whitewater in 1861. Since he was trained in Germany and was able to speak Norwegian and German, he also attempted to serve the Germans in the Whitewater area as best he could. This was done on an irregular basis. He did this from 1861 to 1865. In the beginning, church services were held in the homes of various members. As the numbers grew, they started to worship in area public buildings. Pastor Strassen conducted his services in an English church. Pastor Lochner writes about conducting his services at times in an English school and at times in an English church. Mrs. Halbert told of a little red brick schoolhouse that stood in Flatiron Park, which is now Library Park. Other records speak of older people telling of early services being conducted over a marble store on the corner of 3rd and Railroad Streets. Pastor Ernst in later years wrote of having his services in a public call, which is called Bowers Hall. Later he tells how they worshiped for a few years in a building called the German Free School at the corner of Janesville and Franklin Streets. Later they arranged a place for services over McBee's store on Main Street. In 1940 this store was the Fair Store. The need for more ministerial attention moved the small congregation of Germans to decide to have their own pastor. In the year 1865, Duborg helped them organize and call their first pastor. Remember, this is the end of the Civil War. This is also the same year Northwestern Prep School started in, White, in Watertown, Wisconsin. Here we see a list of the charter members that year. The first pastor to be called was Pastor Heinrich Ernst, who was a graduate of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. He lived in Janesville and served both the Janesville Congregation and St. John's from 1865 to 1871. Our history notes that he vehemently attacked in a pamphlet a sectarian preacher who sought to break into the flock in 1869. He left the congregation to serve a parish in Blue Island, Illinois. When he left St. John's in 1871, Pastor Duborg once again served as our vacancy pastor. The next pastor to be called was Pastor John Kierner, who was also a graduate of Concordia Seminary. He served between 1872 and 1880. One of the first things that he did was organize the Christian Day School in October of 1872. He served both Whitewater and Edgerton congregations while living in Whitewater. They paid their pastor an annual salary of $500. St. John's History notes that on one evening, 10 men pledged $1,200 to reduce their $2,000 debt. After eight years of faithful service, he accepted a call to St. Peter's in Helenville, Wisconsin. At this time, the Ladies' Aid was started. 
on February 28, 1880. It was not until 1916 that they developed their constitution. According to the constitution, the purpose of the society is to help and support the congregation, to contribute to charities within and without our congregation, and to foster Christian fellowship among the women of the congregation. This picture shows some of the members of Ladies' Aid in 1940. At this time, the congregation recognized the need for a permanent place of worship. Before this, they had to shift from one place to another for their services. Some records indicate that it was on November 11, 1872, that the congregation purchased the building which was previously owned by the Methodist congregation, who were building a new church. This building was erected in 1842. The building became known as the Old Church. In 1924, this building was renovated and remodeled. In the year 1877, the congregation was incorporated. This took place on March 25th. After Pastor Kierner left, the congregation was served by Pastor George Wildermuth, who served from Edgen. He only served here for two years from 1880 to 1882. In 1882, Pastor Henry Bergman came to Whitewater. He was a graduate of the Wisconsin Synod Seminary in Wauwatosa. While he was here, he taught in the Christian Day School, which had 17 students, at this time, the congregation increased membership to 28. He left in 1884 to serve a mission congregation in Milwaukee. Pastor William Huth came in 1884. He was here from 1884 to 1886. During his short stay, he continued work in the classroom. He also led the congregation to remodel and renovate the old church. This was done at a cost of $800. When he accepted a call to Green Bay, Wisconsin, the membership stood at 38. Next in line was Pastor Odie. He served here from 1887 to 1918. He served his entire ministry here. During his stay, he also served the Milton Congregation from 1887 till 1904. During his entire ministry, he taught in the Christian Day School. At the time of his death, the congregation numbered 93 communicant members. In 1892, the parsonage was built next to the church, which now serves as our education building. The congregation did most of the work themselves. According to our records, this was paid off within a few years. This newspaper article was found in our records. It records the confirmation class of 1910 from both the German Lutheran Church and the Norwegian Evangelical Church. Notice confirmation was held on Palm Sunday, which was a common practice back then. In the year 1915, the congregation celebrated its 50th anniversary. This page from the anniversary booklet depicts the church council in that year. There are a number of important items that took place during Pastor Odie's tenure. In 1888, the congregation formally joined the Wisconsin Synod. He helped organize our sister congregation, Christus, in 1891. In 1901, the congregation faced the question of lodge membership. The congregation had to decide whether or not to allow members of lodges to remain as members of the congregation. The congregation took a stand against lodge membership, which still stands today. In the year 1918, the congregation called Pastor Fred Laper. He served here from 1918 to 1960. Pastor Laper taught a full graded Christian day school for three years. A one-room one, year, a one -room school was housed in the back of the old church building. At this time, it was decided to call a lady teacher to take charge of teaching the three R's, with the pastor serving as principal 
and teaching the religion courses. Miss Lydia Heine taught here for one year. After her, Miss Helen Gutknutz taught here for two years. In 1924, the church was torn down and the school discontinued. Pastor Laper retired on October 2nd, 1960. Around 1914, the first meetings were held in which a new church building was discussed. But because of the war, nothing definite resulted from these meetings. In 1919, the movement started once again. At this time, pledges were solicited for a second time, but that was as far as it went. On March 8, 1924, an extra meeting was held, and it was definitely decided to build a new church. Committees were appointed, and on April 20th, the architect's plans were adopted. On April 27, 1924, the congregation held its final service in the old church. There was a German service in the morning in which Professor August Pieper of our seminary preached the sermon. In the evening they held an English service in which Pastor Musa of Jefferson preached. Tearing down and wrecking the old church began the following morning. The cornerstone of the new church was laid in the afternoon of July 27, 1924. Professor Schmeling of Northwestern College delivered a sermon that day in both languages. The church was completed in 1925, and on March 22, there was a dedication of the new church. The cost of the new church was $21,768. This is without heating or plumbing. The Wangaran pipe organ cost $3,000, which was paid for by the young people and the Lutheran Synodical Conference students. Many of the furnishings were donated by individuals and groups. The windows were paid for by memorials. In the morning dedication service, Reverend Bergman, who was the president of the Joint Synod of Wisconsin and other states, preached in German. In the afternoon, they held an English service in which Reverend Thoreau of Waterloo and also President of the Western Wisconsin District preached the sermon. This is a picture of the church council that served at that time. One special service that took place shortly after the new church was built was a sacred concert on June 27, 1926. This was put on by the young people of St. John's and also a mixed choir of St. John's Lutheran Church in Jefferson. During this period of time, there was a transition from German to English. In 1935, the congregation voted to hold the first three Sunday services in English and reduce the German service to once a month. The year 1951 marked the end of the German services. By God's grace, in 1940, St. John's celebrated their 75th anniversary. There was a special service on August 18, 1940, in which the congregation celebrated their Diamond Jubilee. In his letter, Dated August 10, 1940, Pastor Labor highlights a number of things. The Jubilee service, the 9 a.m. service would be in German, 10.30 in English. He highlights the Jubilee offering, which was going to be given to the church extension fund. He also highlights a dinner that would be planned after the service. And he also highlights that he was going to enclose one of the Jubilee booklets. This is a statistical summary of the first 75 years of St. John's history. It lists the pastors who served here over the 75 years. It lists all the baptisms, confirmations, marriages, and burials that took place at St. John's. And lastly, it shows us the present membership. 
Notice it talks about voting members and lady members. The communicant membership was 280 and souls 347. During this time, Evening Circle was established. It was established in February of 1956. Evening Circle was established because many women were working at that time and could not attend the ladies' aid meetings in the afternoon. The next pastor to serve St. John's was Pastor David Tetzloff. He served from 1960 till 1968. During Pastor Tetzloff's tenure, he instituted two services on Sunday morning. And he also set up two evening services for the Lenten season. At this time, the church council expanded to nine trustees. This is also the time that campus ministry expanded. The congregation purchased the Dadman property located on the northeast corner of Main and Esterly Streets on May 27, 1962. This would be used for the Christian Education Building and a Lutheran Student Center. In the following year, St. John's appeared in the cover of Northwestern Lutheran. In this edition of the Northwestern Lutheran, there is an article about campus ministry. I would just like to highlight one paragraph from this page. It says, on June 17th, the congregation dedicated this former residence as its Christian Education Building and Lutheran Student Center, thus becoming the first congregation in our synod on its own to operate its own student center. I'd like to highlight a paragraph on this page too. It says that Whitewater is just one of the many areas where faithful pastors and congregations are serving your sons and daughters and youth of our church who are attending school away from home. During Pastor Tetzloff's era, there was a revival in Christian education. Vacation Bible School was organized in 1960. A Young People's Society was organized in 1961. In 1964, St. Paul's of Fort Atkinson extended an invitation to our congregation to send our children to their parochial school. In 1966, a school bus was purchased to transport our students to St. Paul's in Fort Atkinson. In the following year, Lois Bonhoff was called by St. John's to be our teacher at St. Paul's. After three years, she accepted a call to teach at Luther High School in Onalaska, Wisconsin. During the school years of 1968 till 1969, Miss Diane Krieger was called to be our teacher at St. Paul's. On June 20th, 1965, the congregation celebrated their centennial anniversary. As part of their centennial celebration, a dinner was held at Harmony Hall. As part of the centennial celebration booklet, they list the following statistical report. In 1965, there were 465 baptized members and 313 communicant members. They also listed 55 lady members and 108 voting members. This newspaper article highlighted a number of things of their centennial celebration. It highlighted the Reverend Oscar J. Nauman, President of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod would deliver sermons at the 9 and 10.30 a.m. services. The senior choir and vacation Bible school students will provide special music. Members of the congregation, their families, and friends will meet at Starin Park for a noon picnic. The initial centennial service was held Sunday. The Reverend Fred Laper, pastor of the church for 42 years, who has retired in October, came from Phoenix, Arizona to preach the sermon. 
The junior choir was started in January of 1963, and the senior choir was reorganized in February of 1964. A men's club was established in April of 1964 to serve the men of our congregation and our sister congregation, Christus. The next pastor to serve St. John's was Pastor Larry Pouts. He served here from 1968 till 1972. In May of 1972, he took a call to serve the Lord in West Bend, Wisconsin. In 1969, land was purchased for future development. In that same year, we joined the Lakeside Lutheran High School Federation. Also in 1969, Richard Korth was called here to be our Christian Day School teacher to serve at St. Paul's. A, a teacherage was purchased at 303 Whitten Avenue in 1971. In addition to the teacherage was completed in 1975. An altar guild was formed in 1970. Pastor Dan Litke would be the next pastor to serve St. John's from 1973 till 1978. He was assigned here after graduation from Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. Membership at this time was 421 baptized members and 317 communicant members. In 1975, the church received a major renovation. Here we see a trio of pastors who have served St. John's over the years. Pastor Glenn Schneider was the next pastor to be called to serve St. John's. He served here from 1978 till 1984. During this period of time, Gary Schomer was called to serve as our teacher at St. Paul's. This took place in 1979. In 1977, a dartball team was started. In 1979, the Lutheran Pioneers was formed. The next pastor to serve was Pastor Russell Weir. He served here from 1984 until 1988. Following Pastor Weir was Pastor Dean Gunn, who served here from 1988 until 1998. At that time, St. John's had 289 baptized members and 223 communicant members. In 1989, the congregation sold its property on Main Street. A new hymnal was introduced in 1993. At this time, the Wednesday Bible class started. This Bible class met in the homes of members at this time. The next anniversary to be celebrated was the 125th anniversary, which took place in 1990. For the 125th anniversary, the organ was rebuilt. A new parsonage was built in 1990 at our site on County Road N. Pastor John Toppy was the next pastor called to serve St. John's. He served here from 1998 until 2008. In the year 2000, a daycare was started by Cara Tim. Game night was started in the year 2006. This gave an opportunity for fellowship among the members. Pastor Jonathan Rossman came in 2008. In 2009, we had a float in the 4th of July parade. We did this along with Christmas congregation. Our Sunday school was restarted after a number of years of inactivity. 
we began a Bible class at Fairhaven on Monday morning. Our organist for many years, Ken Nipert, celebrated his 50th anniversary playing the organ in church. Not all those 50 years was at our church. We instituted a bowling tournament in the winter in which the congregation takes on the college students. This is called the Towns and Gowns Tournament. We celebrated our 150th anniversary in the year 2015. This is our church council during this period of time. As an outreach and in order to celebrate our anniversary, we had a float in the 4th of July parade. In the parade, we distributed magnets and hand out candy to the kids. Lakeside Choir joined us for one of the, our services during our celebratory year. As part of our anniversary celebration, a generous member bought new doors for the church. We also had a special anniversary offering to replace the carpet and do some renovating and painting in the church. Wells Synod President Reverend Mark Schrader preached our anniversary for our anniversary celebration on September 20th. There is a catered dinner that followed after the service. Campus Ministry also celebrated its 50th anniversary on October 18th. Pastor Dean Gunn preached for this special service. There is a dinner that followed that service also. Spiritual ministrations at the university were begun already during Pastor Odie's tenure. A student group by the name Lutheran Synodical Conference Students was organized already in 1918 under Pastor Laper. The name was changed to Lutheran Collegians on May 11, 1964, when the student group became a charter member of our Synod's national organization. It is that date that we are using to celebrate our 50th anniversary. The year ended with our Advent tea an old-fashioned candlelight dinner.